Hey guys, just uh, editing this video. Uh, before it starts, I just want to give a little context here. This is going to be me trying Unraid for the first time uh, and trying not to cheat too much by looking up information. And and yeah, I did cheat a little bit, but not, not too much. Um, so the video is kind of long and you get to come on this... Uh, this epic journey that went over days and days and days of me trying to set up this uh, this Unraid uh, server. So uh, sit back, enjoy it. Uh, if you are an Unraid guy or an Unraid person, I should say, <clears throat> and uh, you you, you want to have a few chuckles, follow along, and uh, I think you might find it quite comical in, in a couple of spots as I just make some complete bonehead moves. But uh, yeah, uh, enjoy the ride. Also, I uh, just want to say we, we have a goal to hit 1,000 subs. Uh, we're well, I shouldn't say well, we're past 500. Um, thank you so much for everybody who subscribed. Uh, I just want to ask if, you know, if you're watching these videos and you get any sort of enjoyment out of them whatsoever, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and, uh, and definitely hit the like button. The algorithm loves the like button. Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, we're going to do uh, something with Unraid. And uh, later on, once the sy system is built, I'll, uh, I'll go over the reasonings to, uh, to give uh, Unraid a try. Uh, I'm not going to bother with uh, shooting a, the build of the computer. Everybody's seen that a million times. So uh, yeah, without further ado, uh, we'll get this thing built and then uh, we'll get Unraid installed and go over why I'm deciding to try this. All right, uh, computer's done. Uh, I'll just do a quick hardware overview. We've got a, a Intel-based motherboard. It's um, Maximus 8 Hero, um, 16 gigs of RAM. Here we have our 10 gig ethernet. We have a one terabyte NVMe that we're gonna use for uh, cache. And uh, I do wanna try some, um, plugins or add-ons or whatever you want to call it for Unraid. So video transcoding is one of them. So I've just put a 1660 Ti in there. And then we have uh, three 8 terabyte uh, hard drives. Uh, one of them will be a parity drive and then the other two will just be our, our data drives. Um, I do have more hard drives, but I want to, it takes a long time to rebuild the uh, parity or build the array or whatever you want to call it in Unraid. So I'm just going to start small because you can always add hard drives later on. And um, yeah, and then at that point, you just need a uh, USB because uh, Unraid only runs from USB. All right, so to get the uh, trial version, just uh, just do a Google search for Unraid and then click download trial, which is what I've done. Uh, if if this ends up being something that I like, I'll I'll buy the sort of the starter level, which I think allows up to like eight hard drives, which is totally fine for me. So yeah, once you click download trial, you'll be taken to this screen here, and uh, you just download the USB creator for Windows. And uh, I have it on my desktop here. It's pretty simple. You just run it. Um, the version, I'm just leaving whatever it came with. I'm assuming that's the newest stable uh, release. Uh, here you can, you can give it a name or whatever you want to do. I'm going to leave mine on DHCP for now, and then I'll just reserve the uh, IP that the machine gets later. Uh, my machine is um, UEFI capable, and I'm going to keep it. Uh, in pure UEFI mode, so I'm going to uh, uh, check this off. And then, of course, you select your uh, USB device. And... Um... All right, once your uh, Unraid boots, just go to your to any machine on the same network and uh, just type in the uh, IP address that's listed. And at the uh, first connection it's gonna have you make a root password so you can do that and you're going to basically just start a free trial if that's if that's what you're intending to do which is what I want to do so I'll do that this is just confirming that your 
free trial has started. Okay, so, uh, full disclosure, I did watch some YouTube videos on Unraid, and I did uh, previously make one flash drive and just boot a system, and I had a look around the GUI, um, but that was as far as I went. So basically, most of the things that I'm doing here are just flying by the seat of my pants. Uh, I think that's kind of how most of us do it. So yeah, let's uh, let's take this journey together. So I think we can go to dashboard and we can have a look at, um, well, specifically, I want to see our devices that are unassigned. And so what we're going to need to do is, uh, is create a pool. And I think that was under main. Yes, under main. Okay, so we're going to set a parity drive. And I'm going to use the Western Digital Parity Drive because I want to have both my data on um, both Seagate drives. So we're going to set a Parity Drive. Uh, you can have a you can have uh, more than one Parity Drive, but uh, I only have two data drives. So <clears throat> I, as far as I understand, one Parity Drive will allow you to suffer one drive loss, and two Parity Drives will allow you to try to suffer two uh, drive losses. But, uh, okay, so we're going to just do one, and then I'm going to assign one of the Seagates, and then another Seagate. And then uh, we do have a uh, unassigned device, which is my NVMe, and I want to use that as a cache drive. But as you can see, it's not in the list here. So you have to add a pool, and it's called cache. And I only need one slot because I only have one drive. So I'm going to add that. And then you'll notice that we now have a uh, cache pool that's currently unassigned. So I will select my uh, NVMe drive. All right. And then the only thing that's that you can actually do right now is you have to start the pool. And it's going to uh, what they call rebuild the parity whatever the hell that, I mean, I know what parity is, but it's, I think it's just making the array essentially. And this can take a long time. So one of the videos I was watching, uh, the guy had like six drives, I think. And then one drive is parity. And I think he said he was like 15 hours rebuilding that. So yeah, I'm going to click start. And then obviously I'll see you in a few seconds uh, <laughs> in YouTube time but for me it'll probably be a while so let's actually see what it says I'll click start and proceed okay so right here we have some information so it's looking like it's about 12 hours remaining I'm sh I don't know if that's going to speed up or not I'm not entirely sure why it's showing eight terabytes I kind of wanted double that Let's go over to dashboard and have a look. Uh, so 12 hours. I don't know why it says one failed device. I'm not sure what's going on there. So yeah, I guess uh, in 11 hours from now, I will resume the uh, screen recording. See you then. Okay, what an epic journey. I started this parody uh, Saturday, uh, midday. It is now Tuesday after work. So it's like five o'clock, six o'clock, actually. This thing fricking lies. First of all, it says one day, 10 hours BS. This took from Saturday till at some point last night to rebuild, to, to rebuild the parody on, on a three drive array. Uh, <clears throat> that's like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't I don't know if that's normal or not, but I mean in my mind, oh my god, first strike for Unraid. Uh in true NAS, the none of this exists. It doesn't it doesn't do this. You build your array in like a few clicks. Okay, so I got the uh neck hairs back down now. Let's let's try and move on. Um so uh first thing uh, I should say is that I'm now flying blind. Anything I do from this point on, I have no freaking clue. 
Um, I did watch a couple of videos and one of, one of the, uh, basically where I left off was they had did their parody rebuild or whatever and, uh, created a share and a user. <clears throat> uh, but now it's been, I don't know, a week since I last watched a video and I don't remember anything as well. I have to figure out the interface. Um, I have a, what I'm just going to call a quote management interface, but it's not in the classic sense. It's just the built-in ethernet, uh, which is currently this 10.0.0.158 address. I want to get one of these 10 gig NICs set up. So I guess it would be ethernet one. Um, I want to just get it set up with a static IP because that's that's how I use it on between my editing machine and the server is I just I just set up a manual um, IP address on each on the same subnet and then I don't have to worry about a switch. So I don't know. Let's dig around. Let's see. Let's go to the network interface. So number one is what I need. Um. And I'm noticing that it's a member of a bond. I don't remember setting up a bond. It must have done this by itself. Bonding members. I don't want this. Can I, can I fix this somehow? Um, I really want to try to do this without looking at instructions. Uh... 10.0, so why is it, how do we turn the bond off? Stop the VM manager and Docker service to make changes. Is there services anywhere? How can I stop a service if I can't find something about the service? Docker containers, virtual machines. Wait, those are off. Is it under here? Docker, yes. It doesn't... Status is running. Status is running. Okay, so how the hell do I... Do I just turn it off here? Apply. Stopped. This is weird. I mean, I, I realize Unraid is not true NAS, but what the hell? Dashboard, okay. Uh, oh, how would I get back to this now if I ever want to turn it on? Okay, but whatever, I guess I'll dig around and no and apply and stopped. Okay, so let's go back to the dashboard. Uh, let's go to the interfaces. Aha, okay. So, enable bonding? No, I don't want bonding. I don't care about it. Uh, bridging. That would be, uh, I, well, typically bridging would be like allowing like a VM to use an interface to access either a network or the internet maybe that's what that means i don't know okay so what i need is this is still a member of the bond but i turned it off how do i remove these bonding is off c interface zero okay Uh, I don't know, maybe just turn all of this off for now. Oh, wait, is there an apply or something I have to add or click? Oh, it's right. Hold on one second. Let me turn this one back on. Bridging is fine. I kind of feel bridging members of BR0. So that BR0 would be the bridge device, I guess. Let's click apply. Let's see if this becomes available to do something with. Oh. I was afraid of that. 
great. It was kind of, it was kind of, uh, jumping in the back of my mind that I was going to break my connection to this. This is what happens when you mess around with software that you know nothing about. Okay. Uh, but that's the way I like to use software. Just jump in both feet. Okay. I might have to just go to the actual server itself and, um, of course it's a CLI, so that's cool. I might, I may have to run some commands to configure an interface. Okay. Uh, once I have my, ma my management console back, I'll resume recording. Okay, it's now five days later. <laughs> I just kind of put this on the back burner while I was dealing with other stuff. Uh, okay, I have uh, regained um, access to the uh, to the dashboard, and let me just show you what I've done. So we'll go to the interfaces. Uh, I did do a little bit of reading, so yeah, I kind of cheated, but whatever. Um, so, Unraid creates um, a bond out of out of the gate automatically. That's kind of like for redundancy, right? So, if one uh, interface goes down, you still have another secondary or you know tertiary, whatever. You have extra interfaces that are still connected. Uh, that's cool and all, but I kind of wish it would ask you when you're installing it, like, what do you want to do with your interfaces? Um, so I subsequently found out that, you know, uh, ethernet zero, and this is at least how I understand it anyway. So this one here, I have it as the, uh, interface that can access the internet. This is the, uh, IP that I get from my, from my router. And then interface uh, one, I have uh, created a static assignment, which is the way I like it. And, uh, oh, I guess I can probably call this something like, oh, private, that works good. And uh, we can call that one, I don't know, public. Why not? It's not really public, but, you know, we'll just call it something. So we'll apply and... Oh, I wish it would do like an apply all. All right. So, um, I can also go to, uh, let's see. I can go to my static assigned address and I can also log in. So I know that's working. So just to reiterate, in my editing machine, I also have a 10 gig NIC, and I, I've set a static IP on that. And um, so, for instance, my server ends in .2, my editing rig ends in .3 on the same subnet. So um, I don't bother with a switch in between because it's really not necessary. So, okay, that's good. Um, I guess the next thing we want to do uh let's go to main sorry let's go to dashboard so my disks are online the array is online we now have uh some interfaces set up the way that i like it i think the docker and virtual machine services are running still yeah that's cool i will be doing something with that later when i start messing around with docker or even vms for that matter so we need to create a share. Uh, so let's try and add a share again. I'm now flying by the seat of my pants. I'm just going to click what seems relevant. So I don't know. I'll just call this card share. Uh, not really sure what I'm doing, but that's cool. So we're going to do it on the array. I have no idea what these mean. I'm just going to leave it whatever it is. Uh, so all disks, we're not going to exclude anything. We don't secondary storage. 
Do you know what would be cool is if there was a little question mark beside these things and you could hover over it and it would be like, hey, by the way, secondary storage does this. That would be pretty sweet. Okay, it's not there. Okay, I'll stop my old man bitching now. Uh, and let's add a share. Okay. So the share has, I guess, been added. So I think in TrueNAS, we would also have a user. So let's, I don't think we should use root. So let's add a user. Uh, just add me. Um, I don't know. I'll just call it a normal user. Oops. I don't know how to type normal user. Let's give it a password. Add invalid username. Sweet. Only low. Oh, lowercase. Gotcha. 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 Okay. That's fine. We can do that. Add. Okay. So what happens if we go to 172.8 18.28.2 um maybe i need to hold on a sec here let's go back to shares it's called that's the name the name is actually card dash share let's try that i may have to reconnect using different credentials but let's just try this Nope. Okay. Let's copy this. Let's try to map network drive. Let's do reconnect using different credentials. Um, so that would just be Michael and my password. Nope. Okay. That's cool. Hmm. <clears throat> The share. Ooh, I do have 16 terabytes. Good. Card share. Is there something? I don't know what export means. Security. Oh, I think we want to do private, right? Apply. Because private should need a... Yeah. Hold on, read, write, apply. Okay, so now let's go back to here. Hmm. No. Let's try this one again. Reconnect using different credentials. Card share. Um, nope. Uh, do I have to put... Would this... Would this Windows thing work? Like telling it that it's local? Nope. Uh, do I need to put the host name of the machine? Nope. Okay, that's cool. So I don't know what I'm doing here. That's wicked. This kind of flies in the face of like networking that I'm used to at work or even, even on uh, TrueNAS. Like not networking, shares, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So we have a share called card share and it is private and this user has read write access um so why in the hell can't i connect to it okay just out of curiosity let's try the 
let's try the uh, automatic uh, or DHCP address. No. I don't want to look this up. I want to do this by myself. Uh, that's going to end up just being some generic error. Yeah, unspecified exactly. I, I've seen that code before at my jump. Why can't I connect to the share? I don't know what export means. SMB security settings. I don't know. Let's just, just let's just say yes and see what happens. Okay. Oh. Okay. So export has to be yes. Cool. Okay. So. Let's just go inside the card share. Let me copy this. I want to map this as a permanent uh, map. And I don't think I need to do that. Okay, that's good. So um, let's do a test. I'm just going to make a folder called temp. And I'll open up another Explorer window. Okay. And let's grab some... Some sort of large files. Large amount of files. Let me go to one of my old... Here, here's a lot of data right here. 32 gigabytes. Let's copy this and see what kind of speed we get. Three hundred, four hundred megabytes per second. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. My true NAS server was doing seven eight nine hundred megabytes per second and in theory this should be going out the 10 gig nick it has to be because that's the ip address that it was mapped at so why so slow especially since in theory Shouldn't I be using my NVMe as a cache? Uh, is there a way to see what's actually happening here? Cache. Don't see any particular way to look at What's happening here? Do I need to set something else up? Well, you can't spin down an SSD, but that's cool. Perform. Balance. I may have to resort to doing a little bit more research. Uh, in my mind, I had it that um, this was going to be a cache drive, exactly like what you think a cache drive would be. In other words, when I'm copying to the server, it would go to this drive first. And then at some, you know, some point based on some metric or not metric based on some setting or whatever that it would transfer this to the to the uh, array do i have that right i don't know if if you're watching this video and you've gotten this far and you know what i'm asking or you know what you're doing i guess is a better way of putting it uh give me a comment is the cache drive supposed to be exactly what i think it is 
cache all transfers to the server and then it moves it to the array after because uh yeah i don't this is not this is not good at all i mean we've got a, we've got a dedicated 10 gig connection between my editing computer and the server and we're doing less than uh you know like even on a one gig connection when you when you it, you you'll you'll see how it maxes out at 112 or 113 megabytes per second and it never gets any higher than that this is like less than half that hmm okay i'll tell you what uh I have achieved what I wanted. I wanted to get Unraid up and running. I wanted to get a pool made. I wanted to get a share made and a user made and then get it connected. I've done that. I'm going to just pause right here. I'll do a little bit of research. I guess I have to. I can only fly by the seat of my pants so, so much before I just don't know what I'm doing. And then I'll resume if I see anything or I make any progress on speeding this up as far as i'm concerned this should be in the hundreds and hundreds of megabytes per second so yeah see you in a bit okay i think i may have come across something here uh basically i should have created my share on cache is what i'm seeming to understand here and that my secondary storage should be the array. Um, I don't know what the allocation method is. Um, I'll have to figure that out. And then there's the mover action, which is cache to array. So I've just set this up. I'm going to click apply. Okay, well, here, let's just do this. Uh, let's go to the other. Oh, I closed it. Of course I did. Let's open up another one. So let's go to card share temp and let's delete this. Oh, wait a minute. That's another thing too. If it, if you're going to copy the cache and then it moves it to the array, how do you know where it's moving it to? Let's just delete this. Okay, so let's copy this and paste. Okay. Uh, yeah, hey, that's faster. Interesting. So what if we go to our temp directory? So in essence, there's nothing there because we're going to, ah, it's starting to move now. I see. Okay. So there must be some setting on how long it stays in cache before, I guess it's the mover. This is definitely a lot faster. Although I'll tell you what, like I said, on my true NAS, I was getting like seven, eight and 900 megabytes per second transfer speeds i wouldn't say they it, it, it all depends on the content that you're copying right like if you you copy a folder with like thousands of small little files the the speed tanks but if you copy like a large you know eight gig iso or or 11 gig video file or something it, it usually stays copying pretty fast but you know what i'm kind of happy with three and four hundred megabytes per second and it's pretty stable for the most part okay i'm happy with that that was pretty cool um now there was a way i was clicking through here and also my brain is just like you know it likes to uh screw me over for memory there was literally a button that was like let's open up the folder on your cache drive oh there it is Duh. okay so location is cache 
and then temp. Ah, okay, so this kind of just mirrors the folder structure of the... So if I go to the actual inside here, so let's just go up one. If I make another folder and just call it new folder, does that get mirrored here? It does. And that's on the cache drive. Okay, interesting. Yeah, this <clears throat> Unraid is operates, or I guess the UI is completely different than TrueNAS. Not not that I think it should be the same, but you get what I'm saying. I'm used to TrueNAS. I've been using it for quite a while, uh, so I guess I'll have to get used to this. All right. Um, yeah, I think for now I'm going to just use this for the for the 29 days. And I'll copy some data over to it. I'm I'm going to uh, attempt to edit uh, over the ne over the network from here. Uh, see if it performs as well as uh, the TrueNAS did. If it does, I'm going to buy a license. Um, I think the license was if it's going to load the freaking web page. I don't know. I would just need I would just need this starter license cuz six storage devices I'd be fine for that. Uh the only thing I don't know is if it's like a, if it's attached to your hardware or is it attached it must be attached to the flash drive it has to be cuz that's where the GUID is or GUID whatever. I guess it's globally unique identifier. That's I think that's what GUID stands for. So in theory, I could move this flash drive to other hardware because I, I don't know if I want to keep Unraid running on this desktop hardware that I have. Like I, I do have a, a Dell workstation board um, that will accept a Xeon and uh, ECC RAM. And it, it also has uh, lots of uh, SATA ports actually more than what I actually need. I, I may end up just getting a case for that, like a, like a tower case. And I'll, I'll just move away from those 2U servers because they're loud. Um, and I don't, I don't know, like, as far as power consumption. But, yeah. Okay. I think that's uh, pretty much it for now. So this, this noob has managed to get uh, Unraid installed and a pool made and a share configured and a user configured and a connection to it um i think i might have the cache uh thing figured out uh it, it sure seems like i did so what we've copied to cache and then it moved to the pool so yeah cool all right i'm going to uh end the video here Actually, I almost forgot. Uh, why am I moving away, or why do I want to move away from TrueNAS? Uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, one, to have the best performance in network transfers in TrueNAS, you have to have a tremendous amount of RAM. And uh, my machine uh, that I was using only had 32 gigs of RAM. And TrueNAS basically, by default, will use half your RAM as a cache. So that meant that I had 15 gigs in, uh, in cash and that, you know, when you're, when you're transferring, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 gigs, whatever, um, over to true NAS, that cash would fill up and then you would be at the mercy of the pool speed, you know? Um, and then the other thing, which is actually even more important is, uh, my drives are SMR drives, and uh, TrueNAS does not like SMR drives. You need, you need to have CMR drives for TrueNAS. And so with SMR drives, uh, you constantly get uh, warnings and errors and, you know, sync problems and 
uh, just tons and tons. Like I'd, I'd come down after a few days and there'd be dozens and dozens and dozens of, of, um, warnings in the, uh, in the messages that's built into, uh, into true NAS. And so I thought, uh, I'm going to give Unraid a try because Unraid can use, uh, SMR drives and, uh, yeah, there, there's my, there's my thought process to, uh, trying Unraid.